another great example of that. But and as I said, it's actually going to touch on that in, in uh, much more detail coming up. It looks like we're getting some of the results here. I should say uh, after this this uh, poll question, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Zach. Things are going to carry on from this point forward. So we're about 44% uh, positive, 33% neutral, and 22% uh, negative. Interesting results. So at this point, I guess I'm going to go out the air and we'll turn this over to Zach. So everyone, I'm uh, Zach Box with the mining company. I'm the Robbins Company, mining engineer. Um, uh, I've been with the company for about two and a half years. Um, I'm going to be starting off talking about applications of TBMs and tunneling, I mean, and mining. Um, yeah, as Steve stated there, made for long, straight tunnels for the most part, but they can also be used for helical ramps they, so they can connect multiple levels. Their design makes them have generous curves for haulage and transport drifts, so easy driving, not too tight. Um, uh, the inclines and declines give quick access to the ore body, and as Steve stated, they already install your utility lines for mine infrastructure, including air, water, electricity. So on. This is just a basic layout of how a helical tunnel um, in a mine would work. It's basically how a mine would be set up using the TVM. You know, your main shaft starting off. I'll go ahead and highlight here. Give you a pointer. You've got your main shaft coming down here, and the pilot hole of the shaft. This normally takes about a year to sign, figure out how you're going to lay it out. And then you move on to your next year, and you start your CDM access tunnel and move it down. Slow 12 and a half degrees is pretty standard for a TDM, not too steep. Um, and you have the same time you sink a shaft on the other side. And moving into the third year, you have continued on, and these are two separate tunnels. This is actually a smaller TVM excavating this back one. But you come off of the main drive of the main TVM. This is continuing that one. These are just examples of how a TVM can actually be used. And again, then you can make another helical with the other TVM. This establishes the main hauling grist and access tunnels to both sides to the different levels that the mine will eventually excavate for the actual ore. And basically how you would get to your team after you mine, you would break off and just drill a blast into the shaft so you have, you can do your full haulage out of the shaft and use either skip or conveyor to get the material out. Um, other uses for application TDMs on uh, exploration board using microtunneling are small boring units, SBUs. This is an example of a small boring unit that could be used to do an exploration drift. Um, it's a lot smaller than a main TDM, therefore less cost overall. And also, um, uh, it can be used for ventilation drifts making access into um, uh, create your full mine infrastructure with your ventilation and overall production. Uh, we're going to move on into the case studies, including um, uh, starting off with Magna Copper. This was a mine access tunnel. It was 4.6 diameter. This one had a tighter turning um, turn radius of 105 meters, which is pretty tight, but it was designed that way because they knew what they wanted to use the machine for. Um, uh, you can see the examples of the drift shown there. The main, first main drive, and then continuing on to the second drive. There's some uh, 
machine had some key points. It holds through on time, averaging over 30 meters, um, 30 meters a day, which is pretty quick. The main reason they use the TDM is it um, uh, had low vibrations, unlike the drill and blast would have. So it wasn't going to destabilize all the rock in the line already. That was a big worry for the company when they were experiencing all options for going forward with making the drift. Um, the TDM was then sold to Stillwater after the main access was done. So Stillwater mine, they used the TDM later on. These are basic um, uh, advanced rates they got for months for the TBM, which are pretty decent as its rates. You can see the sections where they did conventional excavation and machine rebuild or not. The conventional excavation could come up near as much as the TBM did, but then they were also in the middle of rebuilding the machine there. But overall, the machine had pretty good excavation throughout the year. Uh, this brings us into our next poll question. Um, what is the most important factor that influences your decision to use, specify, and particular excavation methods for mining? In fact, while people are answering that, we have our next question. What are some examples of successful mining projects that have used continuous conveyors? Uh, continuous conveyors have been used for a long time in a uh, Coal mines, uh, they're normally used in long wall production. Um, many different ones in Pennsylvania and West Virginia that I've known people to work at have used full, all continuous conveyors, no hollow actual machines at all. Also, the Henderson Mine in Colorado um, uses um, conveyors to transport a lot of their material to processing and um, uh, ex um, export section of the mine. It uses about a a few mile long conveyor. So it, it is used in a few different mines overall. Here yeah, we're looks like a pulling sun. And look, geology wins out for main influences and that's understandable because geology pretty much drives everything. Moving on to the um, next example is Stillwater Mine. Uh, Stillwater Mine has an extensive um, use of uh, TDMs. They've had four TDMs overall. The main uses of TDMs include mine expansion and access to the JNM Reef, which is the main reef they excavate, and they do a lot of them, uh, platinum palladium excavation. And uh, that reef is their main excavation, is the red of our, yeah. the large piece of a mass, or large ore body. Um, there are four different TDMs. This gives you a small list of which TDMs have been used. They've had a Java machine. It's done over 8,000 meters. The CTS machine that's done 5,600 meters. Um, uh, Arado's machine that is still in production. They've used it in many different drives. And they're getting ready to start with the New Robbins machine that will be, I will talk about its expansion in just a minute. Here's a quick list of all the drives that they have done with the machines, and some of them are kind of short, but then they have a 3,000 meter and a 7,500 meter drive, so definitely better for longer drives, as Steve stated. And overall, the, the mine is committed to major TDM production with over 32 thousand meters of excavation using TDMs. Um, the newest TDM they've added is for the Blitz project. It is a new they have probable ore body that is there and they're going out to prove it and also build infrastructure at the same time. Um, the Blitz project has three separate accesses and TDM is one of those accesses. It's the main ventilation and haulage strip that will be used. Um, why they chose the TDM for the Blitz expansion. Um, it has faster development, so they can access the link quicker. It's two and a half years of development plan for 25 foot average per day. Um, also, it was a different skill set required um, to operate the TDM. They didn't have to remove skilled miners from production areas in order to actually get the excavation done. 
So this frees up steel miners to keep production up and then also build infrastructure at the same time. Um, another reason for using the TDM was it would also include the rail haulage because they use rail haulage throughout their entire mine. So they can actually build the rail as the machine excavates and don't have to worry about damaging it or blasting. Um, also the ground support was going to require less overall because of the circular shape being in the increased integrity and not so much on the over breakage and rock damage due to blasting. Um, the ventilation is also a key point. A uh, round, smooth profile gives better ventilation. So overall, they um, uh, were able to calculate ventilation requirements and realize that you're going to need less ventilation and actually provide the best air for the best cost. Um, the uses of this blitz main tunnel that the TVN is driving is is the main haulage level for all rock generated by this expansion. So that includes the other two pairs that are going to be lighting off of it. Um, and also they're going to be doing an extensive probe hole exploration with diamond hole drilling. And they're going to drill ahead in both sides of the TBM to locate the reef so they can keep the machine parallel. So when they later do production off of it, it's in the right position and they can take out the least amount of waste rock possible. And then they're also going to probe ahead so they can locate geological difficulties that they may experience during um, the main drift expansion as, all, as well as planning for when they're going to actually go after it and mine the reef. Um, this is just a, showing the location of some of the um, uh, propole and core drill areas. They have a core drill here and a probe drill here. Um, these are for both exploring ahead of the machine and also a, the core drill can, located here can go off to the um, side as well and kind of do a fan pattern outside of the TDM. We also have a core drill at the back here for doing fan as well and also doing a uh, perpendicular to the TDM drive so they can use it to locate and they're going to want all the core we use so they have, they know what's going on. This moves us into our third um, uh, example, which is the growth center decline. It is for a coal mine in Australia. Um, it is a, it's going to do two separate drives to get to a coal scene. One is going to be for transportation, and the other one is going to be conveyor drift. Um, there's some unique things about this um, uh, machine. It is a hybrid TDM with a center screw, so it is made for uh, um, excavating the soft ground as well as hard rock, and it is convertible, so you can start off in um, soft ground, and then after you get through the soft ground session and move into the hard rock, you can convert the machine into a full hard rock machine. There is an expected methane gas, so they set this machine to meet all Australian standards for working in an explosive gas environment. Um, uh, they had explosion proof mode, explosive proof wire, and they had to make the entire machine explosion proof. So the TDMs are willing to work with customer and TDM designers are willing to work with customers to change the design to where they can meet all aspects that they may encounter. Um, some of the different things that they must change to make the TDM from uh, earth pressure balance, which is soft ground, to hard rock, they install a muck chute around the chute, and so um, uh, they can catch the rock as it is being picked up with the buckets. They have um, uh, the ETB scrapers are replaced with some uh, bucket lips to scoop up the material and dump it into the muck chute. And then the muck chutes are also installed in the cutter head so the rock flows towards the center screw and then the material can be excavated out. Um, let's bring this into that uh, for more note on that machine that is in production, I mean, in manufacturing right now and will be still in production. Hopefully pretty soon it should be an interesting project for using the first use of a coal mine. Let's move this into continuous conveyors and mines. Um, it's not necessarily a new theory, but uh, a lot of hard rock mines still do not use conveyors. But some of the benefits of using conveyors, um, you don't reuse, you reduce the diesel usage, which with prices varying and seem to be going higher most of the time, it's 